Mike Demerge is here in studio at WVOX for the Sports Sit Down. Uh, sitting beside me in the Sports Sit Down is Sean Dalgower, MassCom student and graduate student Mike Phillips. And, uh, you know, talking off air, we had a little bit of a, a brouhaha going on. We're talking about the Mets and the uh, Yankees and talking about Severino and Sean and Jacob deGrom and Noah Syndergaard and, uh, and Phillips. You're, you're of the opinion that that Severino can't shine Syndergaard or DeGrom shoes. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I am sick and tired of Yankee fans <laughs> who went back in May were telling me, Severino is so much better than DeGrom. Did you guys watch him pitch the second half? He was horrendous. First of all, there, there's... Okay, let, let me pick you apart bit by bit here. Go for it. Number one, Noah Syndergaard and Jacob DeGrom will always live in the spotlight. They will never be, if they ever even come in pinstripes... Then they will even think about being considered a great New York pitcher. They will never be considered a great New York pitcher if they don't pitch in pitch strikes, in my opinion. Because why? The Yankees are by far the better team in New York. The only New York sports team that is actually relevant in any sport is the Yankees. Tell me right now, like, what other team that you can constantly say year after year has been constantly performing in the postseason? You can't, other than the Yankees. No, First the, of all, the Yankees have more championships than all, all the other teams combined. All so. right, well, think yeah. about it this way. We we're talking about this before. You're saying we we're talking about like you know their uh, you know triple A scenario. We we're talking about you say Reyes and you know David Wright are your claims to fame. Hey, they're very good. David player, Wright man. played four innings on his last game because he couldn't even play the whole game. Oh, oh my! Right? You said riddled by injuries. They're pretty good players. They're not great players, and they were oh, supposed man. to be great players at least in the '80s with Daryl and Doc. They were great. They, and Darryl, and what they, happened? Wait a second. Wait, wait. wait. Daryl and Doc, though, were the be- probably the best players uh, at the time. You could say they were probably oh, at the top oh, of their no game. No, yeah, you, no you question. You can't say that about Reyes, right? I think the bigger issue with the New York Mets right now, who's going to be the general manager of the team, and is Mickey Calloway the guy to, to lead this team in the next couple of years? Yeah, for me, to be honest with you, this situation with the search is just completely mind-boggling. No one with any credibility wants this job because they are worried that Jeff Wilpons is going to sit over their shoulder and say, you know what, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't spend money, you can't do what you want to do when you get here. That's why Mike turned off the role, I've turned it down, Ben Sherrington turned it down, Josh Burns turned it down, like, the list goes on. Nobody wants to work for this team. And the fact you're saddling these guys with the new manager saying, oh, you have to take Callaway, that's a bad look. I mean, I think that's the new trend anyway through the MLB anyway. Think about it with the Yankees. You look down, you know, look in the Bronx. You know, Boone couldn't do anything without, you know, Cashman's approval with anything. But we're talking about, yeah, but, the, the, this is more the GM issue. You can't even get a GM in there because no one wants to work with ownership. They're talking about going back to Omar Minaya. To yeah. me, Omar and Minaya had his chance. Yeah. And, and he didn't get it done. He, he brought him within, a, within an inning of the World Series, but the team slowly eroded. Move after move after move he made did not work out. And a lot of the, the signings he made were, were over-the-hill pitchers, too. Yeah, plus, I mean, if you think about it, these people who are looking for this job, you saw what Jack Wilpon did the last day of the season. He went out, threw Sandy Olsen under the bus, and basically blamed him for everything that went wrong with this team. And this is a respected former Marine who got them a pennant and built them a good team. And he is a guy fighting cancer, and Jeff Wilpon is basically kicking him under the bus saying, he's why we are struggling right now. That's a big problem, and, t- and what expected GM is going to say, you know what, I want to go work for those guys. I mean, if you're the New York Mets, again, going back to David Wright and Jose Reyes, what players have you really brought up? I mean, what great or good, even good position players have you brought up over the last 10 years? Yeah, that's average, what I was saying. Average yeah. at best. That's, yeah. that's the best their, their farm system has brought up. Yeah. Yeah, again, like, there's not much there. I mean, Michael Conforto, you can say he's on his way there. No, he has a, Hey, I'm going to argue I have, with that one. I have, I have given he was, up. He, he was an all-star last year, had a bad shoulder injury, and then once the second half came around this year, he was the a guy just, different player. The dude just doesn't want to play baseball. Like, he's riddled with injuries all the time. And, and you know, he's, he comes back, and they're always saying, I, oh, he's not full strength yet. When's he going to be full strength? When, right. when is he going to show us the promise that he's supposed to be? He has not real injuries. He's had one major injury in his career. And exactly. That was, was free, but he's never been injury. back to 100%. Like, you know, they're saying, oh, when is he going to be back to full strength? He's struggled. Hey, in the second half, especially September, he had 29 RBIs in September. That's more than anybody in the National League besides Christian Yelich. And Yelich can win the MVP. Yeah, well, no, you won't see it in October. There you got it. Moving to the Yankees, uh, what grade do you give Aaron Boone first-year manager? Shoot, you, you first one. Ah. Uh, I mean, that's tough. First-year manager has got... won 100 games. It's, it's, it's hard to say he was a bad job. It's hard to say he did a bad job. The one, he, it's, he, he was given a team that was, like, 
you know, mathematically, it was very hard to lose. They they won a hundred games. It was first year rookie year. Like you can't you can't tell me that. And no other no other manager decision. I mean, I don't know if I had to give him a grade. You say? I mean, like. Well, you're a student, so I give the grade because I'm a professor. <laughs> so I'll give my. Friend, All right, you give the grade. I give the grade. I give him a soft B. Okay. Okay. I I'd actually agree with that. And and here's why. Because you think about it. If you think about it, last year they were a game away from the World Series, and then this year just it was literally World Series or bust, and they busted. And people are saying, oh, you know, the Yankees had a horrible year, and you know, such, you know, whatever. They won a hundred games. They won a hundred games this year. Like that's that's off a rookie off a rookie manager. I mean, it's hard to hard to say he did a bad job. Before you get to you, Mike, uh, to me the lack of discipline on the team, the lack of concentration at times. The, the fact that, that they're with, with Gary Sanchez did not, you know, evolve as a better catcher is concern and just you know, uh, yeah. plays where it seemed like the little things they couldn't do uh, was, to me, was irritating as a fan that, you know, that this is not a manager that has fear in their hearts. At least Girardi gave a little bit that, that old school feel to it. But, you know, they want the new manager to be old Barney and lovey-dovey and everything. You know, I never was a Boone guy, per se, up until, you know, the second half of the season where things, you know, were ups and downs. And then I kind of, a few things that he did were, you know, pretty great. But the only thing, the only time I really saw him become a rookie manager was in the ALDS, where he just brought in the whole bullpen that couldn't stop the bleeding. And that was the only time he got really rattled. And that's why he let his starters go in too long. Yeah. Yeah, I just I agree completely with that because like I mean I give him a B as well in terms of grade because I mean honestly with that kind of talent the four of us could be on the coaching staff we get that team to ninety five wins. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think you. I, agree, <laughs> I agree with that. Yes. Plus, I mean, you look at it. He just didn't have a feel for like when to take his pitchers out. That's a huge problem. I mean, Severino setting out for the fourth thing was a huge mistake. I was texting one of my friends during Game Four when CC was out there. I'm like, you got to get him out for the second inning because he was just not equipped for a third. He gave up extra runs. The bullpen came in too late, and then they put themselves in a hole they couldn't dig out of. Now, when, when you're down two games to one and your start is struggling, and, and certainly someone the age of CC Sabathia threw all these pitches this year, get them out. You, yeah. you, there's nowhere to fall here. There's no net. And there's so much pressure on the hitters who are struggling already. They couldn't buy a base hit with a man on base. Horrible with runners in scoring position. Four for 26. He did not have a feel for his pitchers. You could see, you could see him in the first 10 pitches. He could tell if he has it or not, you know, and he was getting up. In well, the, he was struggling with Angel Hernandez. He, was, he wasn't giving him the, the, the yes, water. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> well, Purcell didn't have a problem. He shut down the Yankees pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but Angel is still one of the worst umpires I've ever seen in baseball. The fact he missed three or four calls on the bases on game three is just, it's incredible. No overturn. Pretty, that's pretty horrible. Yeah, that's, that's pretty pretty brutal. Horrible. And they were, and they were, you know. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> right, they were, it wasn't, it wasn't even close. I mean. I don't know. I think I think once you see within the first inning or so that he's either getting shelled or he's working high in the count, like get get somebody up in the bullpen. I think the Yankees got a lot of holes. They have to figure out what they're going to do at first base, what they're going to do in left field, and you know what are they going to do for starting pitching here? Yeah, but, I mean those are a lot of holes you got to fit. And and is Gary Sanchez the answer? And if not Gary, who's it going to be, Mike? I think you have to stick with Gary because. If you look at catching around the league... That's a slogan. Catching. Hey, you got to stick with Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Gary in 2019. Oh, uh, yeah. If you look around the league, catching in the league is horrendous. The Mets, you want to be... I would take him right now on the Mets. I mean, you that with Plecky and Darno for five years, and they're getting nowhere. Gary, at least when he's healthy, is a complete offensive threat. He can throw runners out. If you get him to work on his defense, he can be a top five catcher. Well, the Mets Easy. haven't had a catcher since Paul Duca, really, in 2007. Let's be honest. Here. Yeah, that's definitely fair. <laughs> that's definitely fair. Before that, it was Mike Piazza. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, where, you know, where, where do you go with catching here? It's it's a big issue, Sean. I mean, definitely, Gary Sanchez has just ripped my heart out, game after game, all summer long, with just the opportunities that he's let you know runs come in when he can't catch a ball. It's brutal. And then you know he goes on and he you know he hits you know 180. Or something like that, or whatever. I think I forget. Yeah, something like that. It's just it's brutal, and I mean, there's there's many there's many holes, especially first base is my bigger concern first of all, because I think Gary will progress quite yeah. far. Yeah, really Luke Voigt, he is not a first baseman. He he is not nimble of foot. He is not soft of glove at first base. And and Greg Bird has turned into Nick Johnson. So Greg Bird does not want to play baseball. I've given up on that guy's career. But like, he gets hurt. What, is that, what does that have to do? Not wanting to play baseball. He just guy gets hurt. he just is just horrible. When he comes up, he just shows no life. Like he, he makes 
just is just terrible at the plate. It just guy just is it, it's brutal. It's brutal to watch him play. Yeah, I think he's more like a tease. It's like in terms of like last year in the playoffs, he's amazing, but now yeah. he just can't stay on the field. Just it's it's just not good. He's just not a good first baseman. Like I mean, he shows signs in spring training every time he comes up to the he comes up to the show and it's off. Oh man, here comes Greg Bird. Just uh, brutal. Manny Machado making headlines uh, as the Dodgers are in the NLCS, uh, basically not hustling out of play and basically saying, hey, look, I. I don't have to. I'm, I'm Manny Machado. That, that's his bravado. Is that the kind of guy you would want a team like? I mean, if I'm a Met fan, absolutely, because the way he produces <laughs> on the field. Well, you don't have baseball players on your team, so you're not still get a baseball player. <laughs> In terms of like what he is, he's 25 years old. Right. He's an impact player and can, a great defender in multiple positions. And you know, and you can have him throw on trees. And you can have Jonas Cespedes and him not running out plays. Yeah. Is that what the Mets have come to that you're going to accept? Talk Cespedes. about a guy that hey, doesn't want to play baseball. What's my option? 32 year old Todd Frazier who looked like he was lost this year. I'd rather have the guy who's in his prime 25 is going to be a stud for 10 years. You know, the Yankee dynamic is interesting now because a couple a couple of weeks ago, Didi Gross we thought was healthy. Apparently, he's not. So when he probably won't be back till August, uh, Brian Cashman said on WFAN today. Uh, so do they take a chance on bringing Machado in because of the injury to Gregorius and also Gregorius is a free agent? I can't say that. I, I would like to say that Didi comes back. However, I don't see it. I, I don't. I don't. I think that, I mean, who... I mean, who are we going to keep with? Put, you know, Glaber back over there at that's, short? That's, that's what you have to do. You have to do that. However, then who's your second baseman that causes that hole? I mean, Neil Walker? Like, no. No, no. no. I've seen enough of Neil, Neil Walker's I've seen enough of Neil Walker between the Mets and the Yankees over the last couple yeah. of years. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's just, it, that's another problem. That's That side of the infield's a whole issue. I mean, I, I, I'd like to see Didi back. I don't see Didi back. Um, I think you bring in Machado. That's not the right fit. We were talking in earlier. I was kind of sold on it a little bit, but... I mean, from a player perspective, he just, even, even in the talks when we kind of wanted him from Baltimore, he just, you know, never wanted to play third, and, and you know, he was, he, he was going to play the position he wanted. I don't know, I just don't think he's a good dy- dynamic for the pinstripes. Well, but. Since, since Miguel Andujar can't play third base, I, if they want to keep his back <laughs> in lineup, I would put him at first base, teach him how to play first base, and try to find a third baseman. I mean, I well, guess. if they want to sign Machado, yeah. put him at third base, maybe. Yeah. Definitely a good idea, especially considering the fact that, like, Endahar is a great offensive player, but he's just a butcher in the field, man. I got, I would just drive me crazy watching him play. Yeah, I don't know if he's a. I wouldn't go that. Well, far. the Yankees have three DHs on the team: Andujar, Sanchez, and Stanton. Right. They have three D and, and Voight, for that matter. You've right. got four guys that are really softball players. Let's be honest here. <laughs> okay, they're DHs. So let's not mince words here. Uh, I've got a couple of minutes more. Uh, Giants. Fans are now clamoring for Eli Manning. Is this the last of Eli Manning? Are we watching Eli's final games, Mike, quickly? I think we are just because, I mean, he saw last year he was not doing great, got benched this year, not more of the same. You got you can't be a quarterback in this league who just wants to check down. You have to be willing to push it down the field. He doesn't. Uh, yes or no? Is he a Hall of Fame quarterback? Yes. 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 Well, you no think, question. You think he's no question. question. No I don't question. know. I, I think the last couple of years here um, have really tainted his record because he has not elevated the team. Great quarterbacks elevate teams, and if you look over since this, you know, since the Super Bowl, uh, when 2011, when they, when they beat the Patriots for the second time, uh, they had another winning season after that. But since then, it's you know, they a couple of years ago they're 11 and five, but we've seen you know starting off 0 and six, one and five, you know, and, and what we are last year and this year, I think it's really hurt, hurt his chances here because he is not a great season quarterback. He is not what Peyton Manning was. He is not what Dan Marino was. He is not what Jim Kelly was. He is not what Brett Favre was. He's not what Aaron Rodgers is or what Tom Brady is. He is not a great season quarterback. Yeah, but at the same time, how many quarterbacks in two rings don't get in the Hall of Fame? I feel like every one that was made in was at least two. Uh, Jim Plunkett? Did he get two? He's got two in 1980 and 1983. It's a tough call. <laughs> That's a tough call. And, you know, yeah. I feel like he's been mentioned a lot of times as like a borderline guy. Right, exactly, exactly. So it, it, off the top of my head, that's, that's the only guy that I would think of that won two Super Bowls and not in the, not in the Hall of Fame. But, yeah. so, so if that's the case, there is a precedent. Yeah, not a great precedent, though. No, no. Manny was a way better quarterback than what Jim Plunkett was. Yeah, but, I mean, I think, I think you have to keep in, keep in mind Eli's you know, career legacy at this point. You know, I think, yes, his past couple of years haven't been great, but I think if you look at it, it's a whole, whole, you know, it, look, it's an entire career in the grand scheme of things. I think it's hard if to you had to do. It, if you had to do it again, would you take Barkley as a number one pick or would you go quarterback? Uh, 
I don't know. I I'm a big Barkley guy, so it would be hard to hard to say no. I mean, but he, he's been amazing. He, I haven't seen really anything big. like him since yeah, Barry Sanders. Yeah, it, it'd be really hard. It'd really be hard. What about you, Mike? That was a first guess on my part. I would have absolutely taken the quarterback because without one, in the NFL, you don't win. Look what that Jets have been doing for 50 years. Now, thanks to the Giants, they have one finally. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think Josh Rosen would have been a good fit, but I, I think they didn't make a mistake. I, I think going with Barkley is going to pan out for him because he's such, he's, as they say, a generational talent. And I haven't seen a running back like him, and he's kind of a mix of what Walter Payton, Earl Campbell was. Uh, simply incredible. That's the wrap on the Iona College Radio Hour. I'm Mike Demurgis.